This hand was during my first orbit at the table. I see three lumps ahead of me with pocket sevens in the hijack. This middle pair is on the border for me between limping along and just trying to hit a set or raising and starting to build a pot. I think the pair is just big enough to raise for value being ahead of the limpers ranges. So I raise it up to 20 and get five callers. The pot is already ballooned to about 120. And since I only have about twice the pot left in my stack, the hand will be pretty straightforward to play. If I hit the flop in any way, with an overpair, set, or a big draw on a flop like 689, I will bet and commit myself right on the flop. If I miss, I'm not going to bluff in a six way flop, and will just try and check, get to a cheap river, folding to any bet. Not the flop I was looking for. I check and get to see a free turn, didn't spike a 7, then folded to a bet that ended up getting raised. This was just an example that in these huge multi-way pot scenarios, it's more like bingo than poker. You just gotta hope the dealer calls your numbers. Next up, after folding for an orbit, I get a one level higher pair with pocket eights in the same hijack position. This time I see an under the gun race to 16 and one additional caller right ahead of me before I make the call looking to set mine. The under the gun player has been limping very often. This is his first raise. So I'm putting him on a premium range consisting of mostly pairs that are higher than my eights. A very similar situation occurs as the previous hand. Just slightly different here since I wasn't the preflop raiser. Going five ways, looking for an eight. Ooh, that's a bingo. <laughs> Is that the way you say it? That's a bingo. You just say bingo. Bingo! We hit our flop. Time to get paid. The preflop raiser bets at it. I raise, wanting to get all the chips in the middle right away. He makes some comments once the action folds to him, asking if I already made my flush. I really like the sound of that. It looks exactly like he has an overpair. Hopefully he also doesn't even have a spade with it, then he'll be drawing super thin. He shoves, and I of course call, looking to cash in on my bingo cards. The board doesn't comply though. Pocket queens with a spade. We lose to both a higher set and a flush. We were a 2-1 to one favorite on the flop, just didn't go our way this time. Got a buy-in for another 300. Not too much later I get ace-jack suited in the small blind. See a short stack go all in, and the action folding to me. I feel ace-jack suited is slightly ahead of his range, so I make the call. The big blind also has a short stack. So I don't mind inviting him to call, and if he shoves, I won't like it, but I'll just have to call. That is exactly what happens. After I call, he shows ace queen of clubs. Then the flop leaves me all but drawing dead. The original shover shows pocket sixes for a set, and that's the winner. The other short stack takes about the same size side pot. If the first villain shove with sixes is the worst hand in his range, we see I'm a slight dog at just under 46% equity. But if we give him range that players with such short stacks will look to get it all in with preflop, I would say all pairs, suited aces, and a few more Broadway hands, we see a slight jump in equity to a 53% favorite. Not a hugely profitable play to say the least but I think a call is the best play. I would do the same thing next time in a similar situation. This hand though was a different story. I think I misplayed this hand. I open raise with ace king from middle position. 
That was not the mistake. Then get both blinds to call. Decent flop with top pair, top kicker, and a gut shot to go along with it. Then the small blind donks, and the big blind folds. Pretty easy decision here, I would say. Clear call. No mistake yet. Turn pairs the board with another jack, and the villain continues with a $55 bet. This is where I believe I made a mistake with a loose call. This board is great for my range, and yet villain keeps betting into me. Most of the time players will slow down with the showdown value type of hand after I call the flop, like a weaker ace than me, and I can easily have a better hand with a full house or straight here, so I think I can let this hand easily go. At the table though, I talked myself into a call, because I thought villain could play ace-queen this way, maybe even overplay ace-10. The thing is though, that even if I give villain that hand, I'm in big trouble. If we take that hand out and only keep in ace queen of what I'm ahead of. I'm in deep. I'm in deep. I'm in deep. I'm in so much trouble. Well, throw your hand away. I'm happy with it. Sammy. I don't think villain has many bluffs at all since there was no flush on the flop. So thinking back, this is a clear fold, not beating really any value hands except ace queen. Gotta continue with the hand as played, though. River is a total blank in the three of clubs. And I at least make the lay down here after Villain bets 100. He flips over pocket tens for a flop set turn boat. Makes perfect sense. Not happy with my turn play. Cost me 55 bucks. Gotta move on, though. Can't let it affect me in the next hand. I only brought two buy-ins so I'm stuck at half a stack. If it's just not my day, I don't like to continue playing, buying in over and over again, because I might try and chase my losses rather than playing each hand the best I can. I pick up pocket jacks in the small blind, and things are starting to look great for a squeeze spot, an aggressive early position raiser with a collar behind, then a tight senior on the button is starting to grab some chips. I'm thinking about what sizing I should make it for the easy 3-bet after he calls, but the tight senior beats me to it with a $47 squeeze. This player has been limping all hands he's played and not been very aggressive at all, so him raising demands attention. I wouldn't have any fold equity by going all in, and for this specific opponent, I'm giving him at least jacks plus ace-king. I don't like those odds. So I make a tight laydown. The hand played out with the Razor getting a call and taking it down on the flop with a strong bet. I feel very confident that he had a bigger pair than me. Many players at this limit only 3-bet with premium pocket pairs, so it makes them very exploitable to play against. Like in this circumstance, me getting away from pocket jacks that shouldn't be really folding to a 3-bet from the button if you're playing Game Theory Optimal. I like the play, and I made the discipline fold. Pocket nines with the button straddle on, and two early position limps. Clear three bet, I think. I raise to 40. Get a shove from a loose player that drastically overestimated queen 10 offsuit earlier. Cold calling a three bet. I make the easy call when the action's back on me. We are flipping. Doesn't go our way with an ace right on the flop. Plus, the first limper lets the table know he folded pocket nines. So I was basically drawing dead after the flop. Perfect embodiment of how this session has been going for me. 0 for 6. I'm down to $26. I have come back from around 40 all the way up to 800 So don't doubt me. Pocket rockets with the under the gun straddle on and two limps. All in. The last player left axe calls. Showing 8-9 offsuit. Telling me it's a good drawing hand. Whatever you say. Flop brings queen jack four. Giving him his draw. Another four on the turn. And... An ace on the river giving me a full house. 
I know you thought it was coming. I sure did. Up to 56. Let's keep running up the stack. Not the greatest hand in 6-7 off. But getting 17-1 to 1 in a big multi-way pot. I make the call from the small blind. Flopping middle pair. I check, and action checks around. Turn is another six, giving me trips. I could lead, but with my short stack size, I feel check raising all in is the better play. I get even more than what I asked for with a bet and one caller. Time to go all in. And the second caller looks me up. Don't call it a comeback. Another double up coming. Don't call it a comeback. River offsuit eight. And don't call it a comeback. Because villain shows six eight for a full house. You suck.